Very happy to have Dr. Catherine Diaz Asper. And Dr. Diaz Asper is from Marymount University in Arlington, Virginia, but she will be talking about developing an easily accessible, sensitive, and well tolerated telephone based screening test for early cognitive decline associated with dementia. And she is being awarded a $125,000 grant. Um, first of all, I'm honored to be included with such a prestigious group of fund grantees this year. Um, my presentation is quite a bit different um, than the others. It's an applied um, research study, which I'll be talking about um, shortly. In essence, this project really seeks to develop a new screening test for Alzheimer's disease that can reach many more people um, than current methods. So we'll start with a little bit of background here. Um, you're probably quite aware that Alzheimer's and other dementias represent an immense and growing challenge for older people, their families and caregivers, and the healthcare system. One way to address this burden is to detect the decline associated with Alzheimer's much earlier, mm -hmm. which could increase quality of life, offer more treatment opportunities, and reduce healthcare costs. But early detection isn't easy and a huge proportion of older people with memory concerns, up to 95% by some estimates, don't receive a proper evaluation until the disease has progressed markedly. The current gold standard for diagnosis is a full clinical evaluation, which can take a lot of time, cost a lot of money, and requires in-person attendance. Therefore, for these and other reasons, many older people who need evaluations are not getting them. We propose a different approach. We plan to use the telephone, which is ubiquitous in most people's lives, as the vehicle to reach those people missed by traditional methods. Using the telephone for cognitive screening is not new, as there are numerous telephone-based questionnaires available. While they're good at detecting obvious Alzheimer's disease, they are not so good at detecting the earlier stages of decline, which is where we come in. We're proposing to use new and cutting edge computerized analysis techniques on the speech of older people recorded over the telephone to see if it's more sensitive than these other methods. If so, we will have developed a diagnostically accurate, non-invasive, widely accessible and cost-effective screening tool for Alzheimer's disease. Why look at speech as a diagnostic tool? Well, it turns out there's actually good evidence that deficits in speech and language, particularly semantic knowledge or word meaning, are characteristic of Alzheimer's. And these changes may occur decades prior to the emergence of more obvious memory changes. We know this from a number of famous studies. One is here, the NUN study. Here, researchers examined the essays of nuns as young women as they entered the religious order and found that an essay's lack of complexity was a significant predictor of the nuns' risk for developing Alzheimer's disease in old age. Roughly 80% of nuns whose writing was measured as lacking in complexity went on to develop Alzheimer's disease in old age. Meanwhile, of those whose writing was not lacking, only 10% later developed the disease. Down here we have Dame Iris Murdoch, who was a prolific British novelist. Analysis of her work over decades showed a marked decrease in the complexity of her writing, evident in her final published work, which was written before her earliest memory symptoms were recognized. And finally, we have President Ronald Reagan. A 2015 study compared the transcripts of Mr. Reagan's press conferences with a contemporary, President um, George H.W. Bush, and reported that President Reagan showed a significant reduction in the number of unique words he used over time and a significant increase in conversational filler words and non-specific nouns over time. These subtle changes in Mr. Reagan's speaking patterns were apparent in his speeches some years before doctors diagnosed his Alzheimer's disease 
1994. Over time, the methods used to assess people's speech have become increasingly complex, and a review of the literature shows that many computational and machine learning methods have been used to discriminate between healthy older people and those with evidence of cognitive decline. The advantage of these sorts of methods is that they're objective, reliable, and extremely fast. And you can actually train the computer to learn which features of speech to look for. We're currently wrapping up an NIH-funded pilot study that demonstrates proof of concept for the collection of speech over the telephone in the identification of cognitive decline in the elderly. While we haven't yet completed all analyses, we can report two important results. The first is that the interview experience is well tolerated and has been overwhelmingly positively rated by participants. User satisfaction is crucial in developing a tool for widespread use as a cognitive screener because if people don't like it, they won't use it. The second finding from our preliminary work is that the speech data recorded over uh, conventional methods over landlines, cell phones, and on speaker phones is of sufficiently high quality for us to be able to use automated speech recognition and other computational methods to analyze it. This is important because it means that older people don't need any specialized equipment to take part. This new study will build on this foundation by looking at more aspects of speech, including acoustics, or how the speech sounds, semantics, or word meanings, and syntax, or word order. We'll look at the accuracy of these measures by themselves and in combination at being able to discriminate between three groups of participants, healthy older volunteers, people with a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment who are considered at increased risk to develop Alzheimer's disease, and those with a diagnosis of mild Alzheimer's disease. Our second aim is to examine how well these measures can predict decline by tracking participants across two time points. We can do this by retesting a subset of the participants from our recent pilot study. Finally, our third aim is to look at the feasibility and acceptability of this approach. Feasibility will be examined by seeing how accurate our computational methods are at detecting and predicting decline. Acceptability will be examined by asking both participants and clinicians who work with older people for their perceptions of this approach, as both groups would be the users of any final product. The slide you're looking at now details who the participants will be in this study. We've collaborated with the Memory Disorders Program at Georgetown University here in Washington, D.C., and they both assess older people for dementia and also enroll them in various research and treatment studies. Our participants will be diagnosed from Georgetown as being either cognitively healthy, have mild cognitive impairment, or mild Alzheimer's disease. We'll contact them by phone and conduct the interview, which consists of various tasks from which we'll gather speech samples. This slide shows the order of the study, starting with the contents of the telephone interview to the computerized analysis stage to our envisaged final product. Our aim, as I said earlier, is to develop a tool that is sensitive to the earliest stages of decline, but is also acceptable to users, easily accessible, fast, and economical. Here are my uh, collaborators on the study. Uh, we're a many and varied group from um, all over the world, but they've been very helpful in my pilot study, so we'll be working together again for this study. Dr. Diaz, Andrew, have there been any results yet that you can quantify from this testing method? We've actually just finished uh, testing our 90th person, the final person in the study for this pilot study, uh, just two weeks ago. So we're accumulating all of the data now for those sorts of analyses to take place. What's really interesting, I think, is the, the potential of this technology because it is so fast once you program the computer to look for these specific aspects of speech. But 
during the course of the pilot study, and it will be the same thing for this CART um, funded study, we're actually blind to participant group, meaning that we don't know whether we're testing a healthy control or someone with Alzheimer's disease. And so it's only really when the, when the testing is completed that we're unblinded and we can find out which group of people are in so that our analyses are not biased. So, you know, we're, we're just starting that process now and I'm really excited to, to see what we can find.